สวัสดีครับวันนี้ผมประวิทย์โรจนพฤกษ์มาเป็นผู้สัมภาษณ์พิเศษให้กับสำนักข่าวประชาไทยแล้วซึ่งได้เริ่มจัดซีรีส์สัมภาษณ์บุคคลที่น่าสนใจโดยละครั้งโดยที่ทางประชาไทยเลือกนักข่าวอาวุโสมาเป็นแขกเพื่อที่จะเลือกคนสัมภาษณ์อีกทีหนึ่งแล้ววันนี้ผมตัดสินใจเลือกคุณโรเบิร์ตอัมสเตอร์ดัมทนายความของคนเสื้อแดงที่ได้รับการว่าจ้างโดยคุณทักษิณชินวัตรผมขอต้อนรับคุณโรเบิร์ตอัมสเตอร์ดัม So Robert, um, welcome to the Thank you. Uh, new program by Prashant Thai um, News um, website. And um, maybe I should start by um, asking you about the latest news that we just heard last night, uh, which is uh, called by the Yellow Shirt People's um, Alliance for Democracy for a coup to overthrow the current uh, Ying Lak Shin Awat um, administrations. What do you make of that? Um, Look, you know, one of the things Democrats in Thailand have to do is get back the language. The PAD has nothing to do with democracy. Just like the Democrat Party in this country has nothing to do with democracy. So these are, this is a people's alliance for coups and military intervention in popular governments. And uh, look, I think their, their conduct uh, is uh, absolutely anti-democratic. Uh, many would argue illegal under constitutional norms. And I give them very little credence. I don't believe they represent even a significant minority of Thai opinion at this point. I think they represent a discredited rump of uh, the Thai political elite. And uh, I, th I don't think we should over obsess on the PAD. We have in Thailand right now tremendous issues, economic, uh, political, uh, fundamental in terms of the future of the country. And I think we should focus on the, the work ahead However, we must state that, that um, when the PAD made the move uh, the last time around, back in 2006, eventually it led to a coup d'etat. Well, and let's, you know, let's address the fact that was an illegal coup, and the army is in a much weaker position today than they were in 2006. Uh, the rules since 2006 so discredited that intervention, the Democrat Party, the entire systemic mode of the army veto that I believe were the army to move in similar fashion. It would be a very short term situation and the counter democratic forces would perhaps be put into oblivion after such an event. But um, we have to consider the fact that um, uh, significant at least uh, section of Thai populations do believe that Thaksin and um, right now his younger sister, the Prime Minister, Ying Lak Shin Awad, uh, they are both are very corrupt from their point of view, abusive, engage in nepotis nepotism, and, um, and on top of that, they are supposedly anti-monarchist, wants to overthrow the monarchy and to establish a republic. And what do you make of that? I and mean, how would you answer to that sort of... I, I, have, I have never seen a more corrupt, incompetent government than the Democrat army-based government I witnessed here in Bangkok that shot citizens in the street. Uh, that government and their supporters, to my mind, have no credibility when it comes to making these bogus allegations. What they've done is they've saddled this country with a constitution that is at its root and core simply a method of obstructing a popular leader from returning to this country. The 2007 Constitution is a constitutional obscenity that has nothing to do with due process or fundamental rights. It is basically a document written out of fear of the return of a popular elected leader who brought 25% of the populace out of poverty, who brought universal health care, who restructured the rural economy, and brought into Thai politics a massive number of people who were disenfranchised, whose very ability to call themselves citizens were put in question. Now, I'm sure it's very clear that you're defending Thaksin, and that's partly, perhaps, People would say that's because you are being paid by 
Thaksin himself to do the dirty, dirty work, so to speak, if you are from the other side of the political divide. I mean, is there a way at this stage in Thailand to even convince people who are from a different political stance or position to really change their mind or even open up their mind, both red and yellow? I've been seeing red shirts who are also very intolerant of criticism. So where does Thailand stand? I mean, you are either very much loved here in Bangkok or very much hated, depending on whom you ran into. Well, I can tell you that this polarization is an outgrowth of teaching, which is almost religious in nature. I have rarely seen a people as unwilling to listen to the other side as unwilling to accept the validity of the other side. I gave a speech two days ago to a group of red shirts and I said, it's fine for me to call the Democrats the party of the army, but don't ever call the Democrats uh, some other names that relate to insects or what. I said, that's a very dangerous process. We have to remember whatever we think of Abbasid, Sutep, these are human beings, they have families, they have, they have an entire social network and whatever they stand accused of, we need to always show that our differences are political, but there is a core humanity that unites us all. Uh, I think that is a lesson that has been lost. When you study the history of this country and we see the, the horrible slaughter of students at Thomasat University, we need to remember that the uh, guards that were killing these people were calling them non-ties. In this country, the way you totally discredit somebody is call them untie. Uh, that's not reasoned political debate. And we need to bring forth in this country proper debate, proper discussion of all of these issues. And how do you do it? I will tell you, I am, I am no great reconciler. I know that this country right now is in the business of reconciliation. It's not my business. I'm a lawyer. I'm interested in debate. I'm interested in the, uh, the process of exchanging views. You know, people say, well, you can't listen to Amsterdam because he's paid by tax. And I don't accept that. I have sort of a Marxist bent, and I think we're all paid by certain economic interests in respect to what we do. In fact, in this country, I believe myself to be far more objective than either the Bangkok Post or the nation. I have never seen, outside of Russia, where I'm very familiar, papers with such a strong ability to self-censor, such a strong ability to hide the truth, deny the facts, um, the attacks on the Putai and Taksin and others. Uh, don't even pretend to be objective and yet this is the English language view of Thailand which only adds to the polarization because the international community has a very difficult time understanding Thailand well I'm bringing you back to the your mentioning of the fact that um, some red shirts refer to the Democrat Party as the cockroach political party if I may spell it out <coughs> Does that mean that they're also engaging in the dehumanizing process of I, their opponents? I, 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 as I said, I totally believe that's wrong and that we have to, uh, the red shirt movement has to make sure that that kind of comment stops because it's very dangerous. And, and frankly, uh, we need to understand and we need to learn from the fact that the people who murdered our brothers and sisters in May were human beings just like ourselves and we need to understand what were the drivers that made them shoot nurse Kate and other innocents inside a temple we need to understand what could happen to these Thai people that would allow them to shoot nurses and medical people inside a temple because I think until we understand those drivers and why the army keeps killing its own citizens every 10 years or so in this country we'll never have peace or reconciliation. Now your main job is to see to it that um, I believe those who are responsible for the death of 
at least 91, if not 92, depending on how you count it. Sure. In April and May, um, um, red shirt protests and clashes will be uh, taken to justice. At this stage, it's been a year and eight months mm -hmm. after the incident. How confident are you that um, someone, and perhaps there will be more than one person because people on both sides have been killed, would be um, taken to the justice the judicial system to either here in Thailand or abroad at uh, Look, I'm International Criminal Court. I am ultimately confident that these people will be made accountable. The preference under international criminal law is that they be made accountable here in Thailand. So, number one, the idea is that justice is found here. Many people misunderstand and think somehow I'm hoping for the ICC uh, to grab the case away from Thailand. Certainly, when I brought the application to the ICC, it was because there was zero hope that the our party of the army was going to investigate the army. Now that we have a different government, there is some hope that that may occur, but I am not banking on it. And I'm certainly not going to withdraw our application. And if that application were rejected, I would reapply. I think Thailand is in need of urgent international assistance when it comes to rule of law. And I think that's something that stretches back even before the coup. And that's something we need to address. Because one of the areas that uh, we need to look at in terms of human rights is not just 2010, but this history, the systemic violations by the army and uh, the fact, which isn't discussed here as often as it should be, of the insurgency with our Muslim brothers and how do we address all of these issues. They, they all have to be on the table. It all has to be discussed. Well, if you fail, would you consider yourself a failure in your duty then? And mind you, you mentioned the uh, case of the uh, nurse volunteer who was killed in front of Batum Wanaran Temple. And I must say that the mother of the killed nurse has become increasingly uh, agitated and frustrated about the whole process. And she's been confronting many people over the past few days. And, and Is that not a good sign? It's nearly two years now. And she had little clue about who exactly is responsible. It's not a good sign. The death it, of it, her daughter. It's not a good sign. What I'll tell you is, we have compiled a 200-page indictment that includes statements from army witnesses. I am confident that there will be an accounting. Uh, how many years it will take, I go on the stage here and I tell people if we look at Argentina, it can be 20 years. Will I be around 20 years to do that? I don't know. Um, what I will tell you is, uh, I believe very strongly in justice. I believe very strongly that people like Nurse Kate's mother and others, along with hopefully uh, those like myself who are trying to pursue justice, will never let it go. Uh, there's a bill for compensation that, uh, subject to the ability of the party of the army to stop it, may bring compensation to some of those victims sooner than later. We have to see. But it's clear that, um, and I say this to the red shirts all the time, you can't measure this in days or weeks. This is a massive, multi month, year process. And the reason we spent so much time and effort and filed a 200 plus page brief at the ICC was we wanted to capture the evidence. And I think we have. So whenever we get a fair and independent tribunal, I believe we can see justice done. Now, we must say, I mean, I must say that um, your focus has been primarily on people who seemingly or obviously should be responsible or accountable for the then Prime Minister of Hisset Veja Chiba, the, his deputy Sutek Tuk Suban, who was in charge of the Center for the Resolutions of the Emergency Situations. But what about the, or, or General Bryut, who has been or was then the Army Chief? But what about the fact that um, some 
soldiers have also been killed as well as some bystanders who are most probably non wretched what, what sort of progress I mean there's been no talk about finding people well it, it, again who, again those who are not wretched would say it's the wretched who have killed well, if you if you read well, and they're not going to what, be brought up to justice one of the things people in this country need to do is actually read my ICC document because in it you will see that we hired an American Green Beret expert who makes a very convincing case that many of the army fatalities particularly the ones on April 10th were caused by the Thai army we have in this country the April 10th incident which we believe was caused by the army and Central World this flame over Bangkok that the party of the army keeps blaming I am shocked that the Puchai government hasn't dispatched a, a, a series of investigations because there is cogent evidence that Central World was set by the army we have witnesses who saw the army keep people out before the incident we have witnesses who actually saw a professional what they believe to be a professional arson go on inside Central World we've seen nothing of the videotapes that are available that would have documented this so everything needs to be studied there is no you know I do not believe in impunity for anybody for red shirts for the army for no one um, you know I have been paid by Mr. Taxon but if you read the documentation we put out and if you take a look at any of the pieces we've made we've tried very hard to look at things in an extremely uh, balanced fashion and and you know I was thought I, I, I gave a lot of thought to handing all of our work over to an NGO and having an NGO file the ICC documents and then I looked at how politically corrupt many of the NGOs including some of the international NGOs have been in this country how spineless amnesty has been on 112 and I said I would sooner take uh, the other route which was to bring on board two of the leading international criminal law experts in the world uh, Knups from The Hague and Doug Castle a presidential human rights scholar from Notre Dame I'd sooner try to objectify by using this kind of extraordinary talent than by going to uh, frankly compromised uh, NGOs although I will say that I found the Human Rights Watch report uh, far better, far better uh, than anything uh, else produced by any NGO non-Thai. On the Thai side, there's some terrific NGOs. The PIC has done, a, I think, a really good job in trying to put some information together. Are you not disappointed that um, the people that many red shirts regarded as the butcher of Bangkok, General Prayut? General Shah is still in his hand as the army chief under the well, Black administration. Look, I wrote a paper called The Dual State. The Inlock administration is not fully in charge of this country. We all know it. We all know the army has a veto over what happens here. Uh, let's not pretend. And therefore, uh, I understand that were this government to take the steps that I believe necessary they would be removed militarily without hesitation that's why there's been a massive crackdown on 112 it is not this government's interest at all but we have an army that's got uh, more than a veto and uh, certainly I'd like to see Prayuth removed certainly I believe that the fact that Abbasid Vejajiva is still parading around as the leader of a political party defies political logic defies any form of responsible government and and frankly is a terrible condemnation of his own personal values if you believe in democracy whether you think you were right or wrong and you know you stand accused by millions of your countrymen of engaging in 
brutal tactics that led to these deaths. Shouldn't you be clamoring for an investigation to clear your name? Shouldn't you resign and do the, the things that, that are done in responsible democracies and, and focus on making sure people understand at least your narrative? There's none of that in this country. There's just political opportunism. Now, if you ask his supporter, his supporters would clearly say, shouldn't Thaksin be returning to Thailand to face his convicted? And, and I, would, uh, I would answer that you will not find any independent legal authority who will view anything, who will view Thaksin in any way other than as an individual whose most fundamental rights were violated, who had no option, no ability to come before an independent tribunal. And the charges we're talking about in respect to Thaksin, at their worst, would barely qualify as a misdemeanor. You cannot compare the murder of 90 innocents, the, in the injuries to 2,000 people with a technical violation of a conflict of interest rule. How that is even argued in this country is a joke. It's absolutely a joke. And I have to tell you something. Trying to defend Taxon from the actual charges and what actually happened here doesn't require any expertise at all because they put in place a constitution to destroy Taxon. They put in place judges predisposed to condemn Taxon. It's an outrage. Now let me bring you back to the less majestic law issues. I believe, are, are you not having facing an outstanding less majestic charge as a result of your white paper report? Um, I, I am. And so why are you sitting here comfortably here in I the am, middle of Bangkok? I, I will tell you, I am facing that charge. And uh, the fact that the Democrats, the party of the army, brought that charge is just a demonstration of its political abuse. I am a walking advertisement for why 112 needs to be changed. Because I have never even hinted at anything at all that could approach uh, attacking that institution. It's not my place. It's not my interest. It would be disrespectful to, uh, among others, Taxon, who reveres his Majesty. I, it would be nothing I would ever imagine. And on a personal level, I, I have uh, actually encountered uh, almost uh, 45 years ago uh, the royal family in, in New York in the 60s. I, it, would, it would be of no interest to me. So absolutely uh, a demonstration of the opportunistic way uh, the party of the army uses 112 to shut people up. And I simply won't allow them to intimidate me into silence. Are you not then hugely disappointed by the government, which has clearly stated repeatedly that it won't touch the less majestic law and will not do anything to amend the law? Not you to know, mention abolish the law for that. The, the government is hostage to the army on this issue. Anyone with political knowledge understands that if they touch it, it's a red line. So no, I mean, I, and I think it's very important for the people who support democracy in this country not to be angry uh, about a party that is a hostage to an army veto. So you will not make a demand or even an, a kind, gentle advice to cajole the governments to at least reconsider their stance? Oh, oh no, no. The less majestic law? Let, let me be very clear. I publicly and continuously have urged and will urge changes to that law every day. I want bail. I have gone to, to jail and met uh, da Torpedo and others. I strongly stand in their court. There is no issue. There is no fudging by me. I simply understand the position of the government because of the reality of the army veto. But I am a massive supporter of these individuals who have been jailed in horrible conditions uh, for what are political crimes. Well, why do you think that the United States annual human rights report on Thailand doesn't even acknowledge the fact that they are prisoners of conscience, not to mention political prisoners then. Look, I the fact that is, there are at least 10 
that's majestic detainees that we know of and on top of those red shirts who are considered Absolutely. political prisoners how would you explain that look i won't ever try to explain the united states uh human rights report i have fought that report in respect to many countries uh, the united states in this country has uh, until very recently uh been a force uh that was pro army and anti democratic i think the history of american policy in this country is shameful an absolute shame on the united states uh dating back to uh the instrumentalization of uh the thai army in the fight against communism during the cold war uh and i think it's a it's a book that needs to be written so you you won't uh, find me waving the american flag about thailand so do you you have confidence that the pro thai party which is now the ruling party is not morphing into an ultra royalist party i have i have full confidence that that's the case they are not morphing but i i also have to tell you that i act for the red shirts i don't act for the putai i don't embrace all of their policies as i would not embrace all of the policies of any political party uh, politicians all too often live up to their reputation and what i want to do is see this government govern in a way that will make us all proud and that has to relate to fundamental changes to the system of justice in this country. I understand the economic imperatives are massive after the flood, but there has to be changes. We have to bail people charged with these offenses. We cannot give 30-year sentences to young people on a first charge of arson. There's there's a massive restructuring of the judiciary that has to go on. There the, these these changes cannot wait. The reason I continue to visit prisons is we've got to invest more in improving prison conditions for all prisoners not just political prisoners now there's too many ties the so called educated ties who are on red shirts who believe that red shirts are less educated poor and not able to critically make a political decisions and so perhaps they shouldn't really be voting as equal at least if not they shouldn't even have the rights to vote this is still a very common sentiment amongst many times what have you got to say to them well uh, you think they at least are partly right the argument is that red shirts always voted for corrupt politicians if we keep on and since the majority of the population we keep on losing the election I, look I I I find that statement um uh, almost not worthy of response. Uh the elite in this country appear to me as an outsider fairly hopelessly corrupt. Uh their uh inability to see two or three sides of an issue. Uh fairly pathetic and I I have I'm very comfortable putting a lot of trust in the man who earns his living uh with his hands uh and uh has had less of this formalistic ritualistic education that seems to narrow the minds of the elite here so uh i think the key thing is you really can't generalize uh you really can't talk about groups and describe uh attributes to them i mean when i was here the nation published various um anti-semitic caricatures of me with uh buffaloes and uh around my head were mosquitoes because of the buffalo shit and i think this appeared in the nation um this verges on uh uh real serious uh violations of human rights and i don't think ties understand how inherently discriminatory and racist their society is uh it, certainly one of the biggest differences between uh this country and many countries i've worked in is the openness of the racial hatred and discrimination
Ah, oh, I see. Not defending the nation, right. If the flies are on my head, head yes. <laughs> some mosquitoes flying over your head. But let me just go back to the red shirts issues a little. Do you think the red shirts movement would survive without Thaksin? Or is it the other way around? Would Thaksin survive without the red shirt? Look, you know, I'll be really clear. I think the red shirt movement is a conglomeration of movements within Thai society that have, to varying degrees, uh, some have a significant amount to do with Taksin, some have nothing to do with Taksin. Taksin has a sheaf of accomplishments that very few elected leaders in the world have. I, I read everything I can that's written about him. I read Pavin's recent book on Taxon's foreign policy, which I think is a great read. Very critical of Taxon. And yet, I will tell you, I put that book down and uh, I would just give it a terrific review because the scope of Taxon's thinking on foreign policy, the stage on which he attempted to put Thailand was incredible. It was brilliant. And as a, uh, I'm a citizen of both Canada and the United States, I will tell you that if either of those countries had a leader who could formulate and project a foreign policy image the way Taxon did, both of those countries would be in a different position today. So I think the man's accomplishments uh, are astounding and I think that they they would generate enthusiasm in any country in which he was prepared to be a political player. The question many people don't ask is why does a man that accomplished care? You know everybody always talks about well he's he's supplying money to this or that. Well the answer the other side of this would be if he is firstly why aren't others and secondly why would someone dedicate such resource to a country if he didn't love and feel committed to his people? So I view the relationship between Taksin and many of his supporters as a very strong mutual relationship. You know, when I was here in 2010 and I broke into the red shirt encampment at a time when it was uh, very difficult to do, I had been told that all these people were paid. And then I noticed, firstly, they weren't young, which is what I was told by the Post and others, that these were young paid thugs. They were massively old, many of them disfigured, uh, a huge proportion of them disfigured or ha having their health seriously compromised. And I kept going to them and saying, you know, why are you here? Is Taxon paying you? Because I didn't know Thailand well and watching all these thousands of people. And the answer again and again was, firstly, nobody could pay me to face the Thai army. And secondly, until Taxon, I was not a human being. The Thai elite have to ask themselves how they could allow people in their country to be so disenfranchised that they felt they had no choice but to virtually commit suicide before the army to have their rights ratified. Now, you must have had some exchanges and relationship with Taksin since he's your employer. Uh, what kind of man is he? Some people say he's very shrill, others say he's very stingy, and yet some said that man is a megalomaniac. Um, Kind of look, toxins, uh, look, kind of person. Firstly, come let me let me let me correct this. I'm an independent lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mr. Taxon is not even the wealthiest client that I have, so I don't consider him uh, to be an employer in that sense. He is a client, and thank God I've got many clients. <laughs> uh, he is uh, an extraordinary individual. He is, uh, I certainly haven't met or seen in Thailand a politician that I think would come close to him in drive, uh, intelligence, 
or for that matter in terms of uh, a common touch of dealing with people with all people everywhere uh, you're with Taxon anywhere in the world and he has a charisma that draws people to him so uh, you know frankly uh, I think very highly of him I think we are all flawed I would not call Taxon a Mahatma Gandhi he's a businessman but with him you know where you stand which is a really important quality that you don't see in many people perhaps this will be the last question to, um, for the day um, do you feel there's some disconnect um, during the I recall that during the crackdown on the red shirts movement back in April and May there was a uh, footage of Taxon uh, shopping at the Louis Vuitton um, shop in, must have been somewhere in Paris uh, while the red shirts were in camping and some were being killed um, do you see a disconnect in that? Do you, does it disturb you and does it disturb you given the fact that somehow the red shirts movement which is primarily composed of very poor and less educated people uh, very fond of this politician Taksin was one of the richest men in Thailand you know what not at all and, and I'll tell you um, I think that that picture and the fact that he wasn't holed up somewhere in hiding but he was in exile and he kept doing whatever he was doing and it's his money he can spend it however he wishes it's it's a reflection of the fact that he he is a wealthy guy and he doesn't deny it that picture would only be an issue if he had denied that he had money uh, I'll tell you uh, I think that we've got to move away from per political correctness I am sick of the proselytizing of uh, NGOs and others who wear human rights on their sleeve and do often not all the time but often very little other than live comfortable lives and write essays about the plight of people I honor guys like Taxon who put resource and effort behind trying to improve people's lives and Thailand is an example from the airport to the trams to many things that Taxon was involved in to this foreign policy his activities have impacted the lives of tens of millions of people but that's never discussed in this country absolute absolute nothings politically like a three-time loser like Abbasid is quoted and and deified by by journals like the Bangkok Post we really do need to ask in terms of the disconnect when this country is going to get an English language media that's going to have any conscience and when they're going to get politicians that believe their job is to actually protect the people when they're going to get an army that actually understands that one of its jobs is also to protect the people and stop putting the monarchy and the people in opposition to each other and put them together where they belong that's these are the key issues that need to be faced well Robert Amsterdam it's been a pleasure and thanks for being with us today thank you so much thank you